Hey everyone, I'm Gunix here and welcome back to a brand new Godot tutorial where today I'm going to be teaching you all how to make an in-game clock for your game. So let's say for example you're making a survival game or something like that which has a day-night cycle and you want to be able to show what day it is and what time it is in your game. Well today I'm going to be showing you guys how to do that. So first off I'm going to be creating a script for our rich text label here. So when you do select your rich text label, just go down to where it says script empty and go create new script. And now uh, when saving a script, what I like to do is I like to make sure that I save it in my scripts folder. So I'm going to click on the folder icon, go into my scripts folder, and then I think I might save this as in game timer. And there we go. So my script is called in game timer. It's being saved into the scripts folder and now we can create the script. Alright, so first off we are going to need to do a few variables. So first off we're going to be doing var day. So this will equal to 1 at first. And then we'll have var hour, which we can you can make this equal to whatever you want at the start, but I'm going to do 0. So it's going to start at midnight. And then we're going to do var min, and then this will equal to 0. And usually with in-game timers, they usually do only display, like, uh, you know, the hours and the minutes. So we are just going to be leaving it at that for this tutorial. However, using the knowledge that you do learn from this tutorial, you can add the seconds onto it if you want to. Also, we're going to need to create a variable here called timer, and timer will equal to zero. You will see why we have a variable called timer here. So anyways, let's just get rid of the ready function since we won't be needing that. And now, let's get started with the process function. So first off, what we're going to do is we're going to do if timer is less than... And what this is going to be here is this is going to be the value that you put in for how much uh, quickly you want time to pass by in your game. So how much is one in-game minute going to equal to you? That's what you need to put in here for the if timer less than section. So for me, one in-game minute is going to equal to three seconds. So I'm going to do if timer less than three. So again, this 3.0 value, this is basically telling us uh, how fast we want an in-game minute to pass in the script. So if timer less than 3 seconds, timer plus equals 1 times delta. And the reason as to why we do uh, times delta is because it makes sure that the timer is actually going up in real time. So we want this timer here to go up to 3 seconds in a real life 3 seconds. So 1 two, three. You know what I mean? And so if the timer is over or equal to three seconds, so we're going to do else if timer over or equal to three seconds. Again, this is whatever value you want it to be. It doesn't have to be three seconds if you don't want it to be. Then we're going to do min plus equals one. And since there is 60 minutes in an hour, what we'll do then is we'll do if min equals to 60. So once we do plus on a minute, if min equals to 60, min will equal to zero again, but then the hour will go up by one. So then we'll do hour plus equals one. And then what we're going to do is we're then going to do if hour equals to 24, since there are 24 hours in a day, We'll then do hour equals zero, so then it's back at the start, and then day plus equals one. And boom, that's pretty much that. So that there is how we do the timer. Yep, that's pretty much it. Although I did also forget to do a timer equals zero again, so then we can restart the timer whenever it does reach three seconds. And so whilst that is it pretty much for the timer, pretty easy scripting, uh, what we need to do now is at the end of this uh, little section here under the else if timer over or equal to three seconds section, what we need to do is we need to do text. So we're grabbing the text of our rich text label. So text equals, and then we do in quotation marks, day, and then we go space, and then we do plus string, so we're converting this to a string, and then we actually get our day added in there, so we're converting our day number into a string, so then we can show what day it is in the text, and then afterwards we'll then do a comma, and then a space, and then plus again. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to do string hour plus, and then we're going to do uh, another quotation marks with the two dots there. And the reason as to why we do that is because we're separating the hours and minutes like how you actually would with time. And then we do plus again, and then string minute. And there we go. 
So you're probably now thinking to yourself, well, that's probably it done. Good, tutorial done. Well, no, not yet. Because how I want to format the time is so then, let's say for example the time is 6 o'clock, right? I want it to display as 06 dot dot o o. You know what I mean? So what we're going to be doing is we're actually going to be creating two new variables for our converted uh, hours and minutes. So we're going to do var hour and I'm going to do underscore con just as a, you know, a short for converted. So var hour con and then var min con. So again, uh, con is short for converted. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do if hour is less than 10, then our con will equal to will equal to quotation marks zero inside and then plus string hour. So basically, if our hour is under ten, we will then display another zero out the front of that. So then it's like you know o one o two o three o four o five o six until it goes up to ten. Then we no no longer need to display a zero out the front of it. And then we just do um else if hour so then we do else if hour over or equal to 10. Then we do hour con equals to just a string hour. There we go. And then we do the same thing for the min one. So we can just like copy this hour section here, paste it underneath, then change the hour to min. You know, just change the words which say hour to min here. And there we go. So now we're converting our hour and our st and our minutes for the text here. So what we're going to actually do now is we are going to replace the string hour with just hour con. And since hour con is already a string, we don't need to put the str at the front of it. And then we do the same thing here with min con. And there we go. So that should realistically be it now. So if we actually go test this out, uh, if we go test out this scene, hopefully everything works as intended. And yep, as you can see, the timer is now increasing. So it is currently day one, midnight. Uh, it is now three minutes in, four minutes in now. And uh, yeah, so if you do want to actually see this go up a lot faster, you can, of course, change that. So what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to change the rate from uh, plus equals one here on the timer to like 10, just so we can see how fast this can quickly go as a test. And uh, here we go. So now we can see the time going up a lot faster now. And as you can see, um, when it does go up to 10, uh, it no longer displays a zero out the front of the minutes, but it will switch over to an hour soon. Once it gets up to 60, it should then switch over to 1 a.m. And there we go. And by the way, this is a 24 hour clock, which we've made here. So that means that when it goes past 12, it will then go to 13, which is one o'clock and then so on and so forth. So yeah, now it is at 2 a.m., still going up. Let's actually see how crazy we can really get this, because I want to try to see it go, like, I want to actually test out the day going past. All right, so now I've made the time crazy fast. As you can see, it is going very, very fast now. I want to see it switch over the next day so then I can truly conclude this tutorial. But yeah, so now it is 3 p.m., 4 p.m., 5 p.m., 6 p.m., 7 p.m., 8 p.m., 9 p.m., 10 p.m., 11 p.m., and now it is day two. And there we go. So yeah, as you guys can see, the timer works perfectly. So if you did enjoy this tutorial, if you did learn something from it, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. See you all soon, and goodbye.